when we think about peace, we think about quiet, tranquility, calm, serenity. But then, in the eyes of God, when he says peace, he's looking at the aspect of your external environment not affecting the internal presence. In the midst of trouble, we can still be regulated and not be dysregulated. The trouble and anxiety and everything that happens to us or around us is happening to dysregulate us so that we can start becoming negative so that the devil would find a way to hijack our mind and imagination. Because immediately something bad happens to you, your imagination start playing a movie a negative movie of how worse that thing can get how the peace of god helps you stay regulated now that is what i want to talk about in today's video in john chapter 14 verse 27 jesus said peace i live with you my peace i give to you not as the world gives do i give to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid when we think about peace as humans we think about quiet tranquility calm serenity but then in the eyes of god when he says peace he's looking at the aspect of your external environment not affecting the internal presence in our world if we can be honest we will not always have serenity which is we will not always have a state of calm and we would not need peace if everything were to be calm we only need peace because when trouble comes when anxiety comes when chaos happens, when there is contention or strife, when there is conflict, that's when we need peace. Living in a world like this, where a lot of things happen, the picture of peace could look like going to a place, maybe the beach, where it's calm, it's serene, an environment like that, which is a good thing, taking a vacation and just having yourself some rest. But then people still go to such places and anxiety is plaguing them in the mind. People still go to such places with their spouses and then they are in a state of so much discomfort and conflict and even resentment. Jesus says the peace that I'm talking about is not the kind of peace the world gives because the world's kind of peace is almost like this is an escape from the everyday trouble. Just take a month away. And after that month away, it could even be in the midst of that month away in vacation, you don't even have the peace. And after that month away, you can come back and continue in the chaos. The peace of God is notwithstanding whatsoever is happening in the external environment that you are in, your internal is not disturbed. It's not perplexed. It's not surprised because it is the God kind of peace. We see this kind of peace that Jesus talks about as demonstrated by him in Mark chapter 4. He was in the sea when the sea was roaring with his disciples. Funny thing is that all of them were all walked out because the water was entering the boat and the boat was tumbling. And they were like, where is this our Lord? They went to meet him and he is sleeping. Then the disciples said to him, Master, don't you care that we are going to die? Why are you sleeping? And that was the essence of him showing us a picture of the peace he's talking about. That in the midst of chaos, we can still have a calm disposition. In the midst of trouble, we can still be regulated and not be dysregulated. The trouble and anxiety and everything that happens to us or around us is happening to dysregulate us so that we can start becoming negative so that the devil would find a way to hijack our mind and imagination. Because immediately something bad happens to you, your imagination start playing a movie a negative movie of how worse that thing can get. It happens to me. I don't know if it happens to you, if you can be honest, but whenever something bad happens or there's a sign of something bad or there's a sign of trouble, chaos, whatsoever, anxiety, before you know, a bad movie start playing. That is a process of the devil trying to hijack your imagination to bring you into this negative thinking. And the peace of God is the only thing that can keep you regulated. When somebody accuses you of something wrong, that you are not guilty of, it is the peace of God that will keep you regulated not to be emotionally reactive. Something happened to me just this past week and someone accused me of something very heavy, which I'm not going to give the details. And honestly, as a human, I wanted to give a reaction because I was like, what is the meaning of this? And then I recalled that this was the portion I was reading in the morning as my devotional. Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Then I realized that in the midst of this, I can experience the peace of God. And that was how God helped me regulate my nervous system that I did not allow anxiety and fear and worry to hijack me. Yeah, my mind still went ahead wanting to go to play movies of how bad things could happen, but I just declared the peace of God. 
that I have the peace of God. Scripture says, I have given you peace. I live with you my peace. And that is how my mind, I was able to be in charge, to master the situation and talk without allowing my emotions to speak. The peace of God is that only tool that can help us regulate our nervous system. It is the peace of God that helps you in tension because the nature of the peace of God is not about calm. It is about the ability to hold the tension. Maybe in a difficult conversation, in a difficult situation where you are having to resolve an issue, you can hold the tension with someone and go into a difficult conversation or difficult situation, but still with a composed posture because most of us before we know we give out all these bouts of anger and then our emotions takes us over and we become impulsive and compulsive it is the peace of god that helps us in this situation my emotion is not going to get the best of me this feeling is not going to get the best of me this fear is not going to get the best of me or whatsoever it is you can clearly tell yourself this is not going to get the best of me because i have the peace of god and what does the peace of god do for us it helps us become self-aware it helps us have a focus and we are able to think clearly that we are not overtaken with anger or with whatsoever thing. We are not just hearing to respond, but we are listening. That self-awareness is there of you knowing this thought. Is it honorable? Is it honest? Is it pure? Like Paul said, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are noble, think about these things. So whenever your mind is trying to be hijacked, is that thought pure? Is that thought honest? Is that thought healthy? Is that thought good for you? If it is not good, shift it aside and embrace the peace of God. At the end of this video, I'm going to explain what I call the peace of God and how I experience the peace of God. Because like I said, it is not just calm. The next thing is that when the scripture says, guard your heart above all else in Proverbs chapter 4, it did not suggest that you can do it on your own. It did not suggest that you should use your mind and almost like try on your ability to wink your thoughts. But it said, you can't do it alone. I have given you my peace to help you guard your hearts. Because on your own, these thoughts that you are fighting, most of them are so overwhelming that they will overwhelm you in your natural thinking. But that is why we have the word of God that the peace of God through the spirit of God will help us to focus on the word of God, on the promise of God that he has given us. That I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. He brings to your memory now the word of Christ so that you can stay in a place of being regulated instead of being dysregulated. When he says, guard your hearts, the New Testament gives you an answer on how to guard your hearts. Paul said in Philippians, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. The answer here is, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. The peace of God will guard your heart. So when scripture in Proverbs says, guard your heart above all else. Scripture gives you an answer. The peace of God will guard your heart. It is telling you the way for you to guard your heart is to focus on the peace of God. Refocus on the peace of God. Get to embrace the peace of God. Now, peace in the scripture is in two words. One is the Hebrew word and the other is the Greek word. The Greek word for peace is erin. Well, the Hebrew word is shalom. Now, these words, they are so all-encompassing. They do not mean serenity only. They mean security, safety, welfare, provision, prosperity. That is what peace entails. And of course, you realize that for your life, when you have provision, you look at your bank account and that thing is heavy. <laughs> You'll be like, I have peace. Anxiety cannot hit you on that area. You look at yourself, you have security. You are safe. You are protected. Definitely you have peace. You are prosperous. You have welfare and everything. That is the representation of peace. And that is what God means by peace. He's saying, my peace will be with you. My protection is with you. My security is with you. Safety, provision, prosperity. I am here for you. Which is, this all is found in Christ himself. I live with you my peace. I give you my peace. What are the enemies of peace? They are anxiety, fear. Worry, chaos and trouble, instability, intrusive and negative thoughts, conflicts, unforgiveness, regret, 
accusation whatsoever thing that you would mention they are enemies of peace they are enemies of your life and how do you combat these enemies the peace of god be anxious for nothing instead Allow the peace of God to guard your heart as you go into praying, focusing on God, going to God with those requests, with those heavy burdens on your heart, and thanking God, knowing that God has answered you, knowing that God is with you, knowing that God's presence is with you. Now, let's go back to John 14, verse 27. When Jesus said that he leaves his peace with you, he said, do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The word there, afraid, means don't let your heart be timid. Now, this is the point I give you based on that. The peace of God helps you out of timidity. That instead of becoming timid and fearful, the peace of God is what helps you. That is why the scripture says that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. That word fear though in Timothy is the word for timid. So God did not give you the spirit of timidity. Because don't even be a timid person and think that you are humble. Timidity is not humility. Timidity is a product of fear, not peace. So when you have the peace of God, the peace of God helps you out of timidity. That is how you stay regulated because a timid person will be very dysregulated and fearful and become a coward. And God says, I didn't make you like that. That is not my spirit in you. Because somebody threatened you does not mean you should chicken and act like a chicken. You have a God who saves you. You have a God whose protection is with you. And the Bible here in Philippians, the word Paul used, about the peace of God guarding your heart. The word for that guard in the King James Version, it says the peace of God will keep your heart and mind. That word means like a military sentinel who is like the guard on duty at the gate. That is how the peace of God is represented as that military sentinel who stands there as guard on the gate to spot against every enemy that would want to bring an invasion to the city or to the building or to the establishment. That God and the duty is there to spot the enemy and to report same so that they could get armed and get ready to face the enemy that would come with an invasion or that would come to besiege the city to, that would come to take over the environment so when the devil comes at you with trouble with anxiety with fear and all of these things he's coming to take over to besiege to create an invasion in your life and that is why the peace of god is like that military sentinel spotting it from afar and telling you now you have to be on guard whatsoever things are true think on these things you get into prayer you get into thanksgiving knowing that i am not alone god is with me and also this is another point to note that the peace of god guards your heart which is your feelings and your thinking your heart and your mind your feelings and your thinking that's what the peace of god does it's put as a sentinel would spot an enemy coming with an invasion to your feelings to your thinking and those are the two places you have to be conscious of when you think about the peace of god what is going on in your mind what what thoughts are you thinking is it in line with the word of god is it in line with the promises of god is it true is it honest is it noble is it healthy and then you think about what are you feeling because this is where the peace of god guards your heart and your mind your feelings and your thinking so that you will not be dysregulated so that you will not be overtaken so that you will not be overwhelmed by the things that are happening around you and this is my submission to you because christ said that he has given you peace you have the peace of god and how do i explain this so that you would understand the peace of god is the presence of god the peace of god is a presence it's not a feeling that is why it is this peace that will guard your own feelings and guard your own thinking if you want to experience the peace of God, first of all, as a feeling, that's where you're missing it. You already have the peace of God and it is the consciousness of your mind to know that God is with you. The presence of God is with you. How do you know that God is with you? Scripture says that he is Emmanuel, God with us. And then it says that we have the spirit of God inside of us, the Holy Spirit, which means I have the peace of God because the Holy Spirit lives in me. This is the temple of the spirit of God. He lives in me. The peace of God is a presence. The presence of God with me is peace. The Holy Spirit in me is my peace. Of course, that's why scripture called Jesus the Prince of Peace. So if you were expecting that the peace would be represented through your feelings, oh, I don't feel peaceful today. It doesn't matter how you feel. You have the peace of God. If you lock into the peace of God and then get to commune with the spirit of God in you, get to know that you are not alone, that God is with you, the sense of safety will come back. The sense of 
being provided for, provision, welfare, it will come back to you. The sense of protection and security will come back to you. That's how you regain back your peace. This is powerful. And I'm giving this to you because I am using it now. God is helping me with it. As God opened my eyes to see the peace of God as this sentinel that is there as a watchman to watch the establishment, to stand at the gate, I realized that this is how God has given us the power to guard our feelings, to guard our thinking. Because our thinking, the devil is trying to overwhelm us with a lot of things that are happening around us. And you can only say, I have the peace of God. Mm. This is a cheat code I will give you. Whenever you feel these things try to creep in, the fear, the worry, the enemies of your peace, like I mentioned, remind yourself, I am not alone. I have the peace of God. I am not alone. I have the peace of God. Your consciousness that you are not alone, that you have the presence and the peace of God with you, is what will help you refocus back on the security that God provides for you. Refocus back on the safety, the welfare, and everything that will make for your peace. And let me prove to you again how I came to this belief and why you should believe this. John 14 verse 26 talks about Jesus saying, I am giving you a helper. I'm sending you a helper, a comforter, a standby, the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will lead you into all truth. Then the next verse, he says, I did not leave you alone. I'm not leaving you alone. I'm leaving you with my peace. Not the kind that the world gives. So what do you think is this peace? His spirit in us as our comforter, as our counselor, as our helper, as our standby is our assurance of peace. That's the only proof I can give you from the Bible so that you would know that when you think about Jesus saying, my peace, I live with you. Know that you have it already. His peace is with you. You don't need to start praying and going for fasting to have this peace. You already have it. You just need to be conscious of it that it is not a feeling. The peace of God is not a feeling, but the peace of God is the only thing that can help your feelings and your thinking because it is you the knowing consciously that this peace is the presence of the Holy Spirit with you as a helper, as a comforter, as a standby. He's here to protect, to lead, to guide, to direct. What do you need for your peace? It is all these things. Leadership, direction, guidance, protection, provision, and God says, I've got your back. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope that this video is a blessing to you. I am OM. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, I would like you to hit that subscribe button right now. And if this content is blessing you already, do not hesitate to let me know. Let me know how it is blessing you. Let me know how it is impacting you. And stay in the comments and let's talk about this peace of God. Thank you and God bless you. Salutes. Your watchman is the peace of God. Your sentinel is right there at the gate watching for your heart, watching for your mind to make sure that you are safe and you are protected. God bless you and keep you at peace. Amen.